Hello everyone, nice to have you all back for another episode of our 107 channel. Today's topic is the warm-up regulator of this W126 with a M110 engine in K-Jetronic. No. <coughs> This component became obsolete with the introduction of the key i in 1985. A short overview over different Bosch injection systems. In 1967 Bosch introduced the Chetronic, say the principles of a common rail, pulsating injection. Some years later Bosch introduced k -Chetronic. Both systems have some significant differences. K Chetronic later on was developed into Ki I Chetronic, which was being mounted from 1985 onwards. This much for history lessons, I just want to brag. Back to the warm up regulator of this 286 cylinder engine. Our component is a little hard to reach, being hidden in the dungeons of the engine bay. When working on 8 cylinder models, it is, well, for a change, well, for a change, easy to reach car is on the lift already, let us start right after introduction. Before unbolting this very warm-up regulator, let me explain what the purpose of this component is. Warning. Job of this component is to ensure a smooth idle even when engine is cold. Yes, even when engine is cold. From the second you fire up the engine until working temperature is reached. This component is close to the engine block and ideally directly attached to the block to feel the temperature of the engine. Therefore the bimetal is bending and opening or closing a fuel line. But this will be explained when I have dismantled this component. It is getting a little complex. We are at the left side of the engine, right underneath, right here, the connecting vacuum line over here, the fuel line back to the tank, the exiting line for the control pressure, the plug is for the electrical heating of the bimetal plus an additional vacuum line, but all this will be shown in detail when this component is sitting on the workbench. It is being held in place with some allen screws right here, only two of them. Unbolt first and disconnect hoses after that. Be patient, do not use brute force please. Here we go, the component and the two bolts and that piece of a curved vacuum line. See this? Stained like this on the outside gives you an idea how it looks on the inside. We now remove the bottom plate. Four simple Phillips, do not lose them. Use a heat gun, it always helps. There are nuts on the other side, do not lose them either. This is it. This coil spring here with that plate on the lower end is being compressed or released by the bending by metal. First remove the coil spring, second remove the plunger with that metal plate. It actually looks alright, some gunk and residue, but basically alright. I'm surprised. I have seen worse. Next, we remove that heatable bimetal strip, then we remove that safety clip with pointed tip pliers. Please see drop down picture on the left. With a Phillips you can wiggle that safety pin aside. Take your time, don't break anything. With a socket size 10 you carefully remove the mounting with which the non-moving end of the bimetal strip is being held in place. Enlarged picture on the left, the green wrapping is around the heatable wire. Remove the washers and remember the position when we reassemble it.
carefully slide it off that bolt to remove the bimetal strip. Wiggle wiggle and it comes off. That rectangular box dangling from the green wrapping is some resistance since this strip is being heated to trigger the bending of the bimetal. This one here is the ceiling. The control unit is sitting right here. Screws are always tight because dirt can enter from the other side. Had to use a vise to hold the upper half in place and eventually I could remove all four bolts. Once I remove the plate of this control unit, we can tell more about it membrane. Repair kits are available to replace broken components. But for the time being, this one looks quite alright. Very little fuel gunk. The plate actually looks quite alright. Surprise, surprise. I'll just give it a wipe and that's it. Well, an open end spanner size 14 will do the job. Do not forget the copper sealing inside. For the other one, use a spanner size 12. Inside I see that filter with, fortunately, very little gunk. Also a copper sealing here, do not forget. Enlarged photo on the left. See that filter there? I'll give it a wash, immersing it in an ultrasonic bath. Maybe I should connect it first. <laughs> Could it help? Shiny and clean, just like new. This is the membrane, so this plunger is sitting in the center hole of this plate that looks like a coin. When it's pressing against the membrane, make sure that the pin can move easily in its seat in that center hole so it can counter press against the membrane pressure from top is the fuel trying to pass we now reassemble it the repair kits have all ceilings and include the membrane as well also the ceilings of the resistance the wires leading to the green heating element so all but the housing comes in package the part number for the repair kit is in a drop down on the left hand side, Nota Bene, it is for a M110 engine. Ultrasonic bath removed all dirt and gunk, you see right here, it looks clean and shiny and very important, please see enlarged photo on the left before and after. We start reassembling it and respect the right order. First, place membrane on new ceiling. Second, take plate, place it on top of membrane, see? Later, this plunger must move freely to apply counter pressure on the membrane. Well, it's actually a job for a watchmaker. Now bolt in the four screws which hold the plate in place. We now tighten the four bolts evenly to apply the same pressure all over the four screws. Next, we slide in the heating assembly. Sealing of the resistance seems okay. Do not try to bend the bimetal, otherwise you alter the reactions and parameters of the entire unit. Don't screw it up. Now, Place it on that pre-mounted protruding pin. Next, pull resistance out of the housing until it is sitting snugly in position. Now slide back this rectangular safety pin in that groove. Now turn bottom half around. Make sure the bimetal strip is in the right place. Keep it firmly with one finger. First, put back washer. Second, put back safety washer, then put back bolt. Do not tighten bolt firmly yet. There's a reason why. Because we need to adjust the top end of the strip to touch the plunger at the right place. This plunger needs to go through that hole of the bimetal because it has to regulate the pressure coming from the fuel at the top end where that coin-shaped plate is pressing against the membrane allowing the fuel to flow or not. Now this plunger must fit snugly in that center hole of that plate. 
it really has to fit right in the center. Some lubricant will help. Now take the smaller of the two springs, make sure the plunger stays in the center hole of the plate. Steady hand required. The lubricant provides some adhesion so the spring stays in place. Next, bigger of both springs needs to be placed over the smaller one. A chop for a watchmaker for sure. Next, do you see that circular groove? This is the bottom mounting the seat of the spring. Bottom and top end should touch first on the opposite side of the spring. This ensures that you do not alter position of the spring by mistake. Lucky me. Next, have your balls ready at hand. Six holes for balls. The two holes in the middle of housing are for mounting it into the engine bay. The four corner holes are to tighten the two halves together. Hold one hand on top of the housing firmly so they do not come apart anymore. Next, tighten nuts at bottom of the four bolts. Keep pressing the halves together firmly. Tighten the bolts firmly as well to ensure waterproof sealing. Some procedure. Just tighten firmly. This is what it looks like. Now, take the copper seals, place them on valves. Screw them back in. Second seal over second valve, therefore entry and exit valve. Surprise, surprise, no components forgotten. Well, great actually. These two bolts attach the unit to the engine bay and then connect wires, fuel lines and vacuum lines. Like before, open spanners size 12 and 14 are needed to tighten the two valves. Back to the engine bay after that. What did we achieve apart from getting dirty hands? Detaching of unit, dismantlement of unit, cleansing and replacement of broken components, reassembly and attaching to appropriate place next to engine. There is a wide variety of these components depending on car and year of production. This video is having a continuance in which I explain the purpose of the components and how they work together. If this, is jo if this job is too much of a hassle for you, unbolt component and send it to me. Contact me first. I will get it done for you. Thank you for watching. Bye bye everyone. Hope to see you again. Bye bye.